Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. President Trump unleashes stealth border wall maneuver, sends Mexico scrambling. From the very beginning of his campaign, Donald Trump promised to Americans that Mexico will pay for the border wall. But Mexico responds quickly, refusing to do so. However, Mexico is not in a good position to argue with America. The country enjoys billions of dollars a year in remittances from the U.S. that doesn't include the business and wealth it receives from American companies. You'd think their government would be willing to at least discuss the wall, in hopes of sealing great trade deals. Instead, Mexico's president has decided to scramble and kick and fight and flee right after President Trump finished a phone call with him. A phone call in which President Trump was able to detail his border wall plans in a precise fashion. And Trump's border wall maneuver is something that Mexico cannot ignore forever. From Daily Caller Mexico is delaying a meeting between Mexican President Enrique Peña Nieto and President Donald Trump for a second time because Trump refuses to take border wall talks off the table. Trump and Nieto exchanged words about the border wall on a phone call Tuesday and planned a long-awaited White House meeting between both world leaders. The president reportedly refused Nieto's demands that border wall negotiations be left out of the conversation topics at the pending White House meeting causing Nito's administration to once again postpone a trip to Washington. After announcing he would not attend the White House meeting, Nieto promised the Mexican people the nation would not pay for any part of the wall, a reference to one of Trump's key campaign promises regarding its construction. This is happening as renegotiation talks for NAFTA continue this week. Not good, Nieto. Your country needs trade with the U.S. Refusing to meet and talk with Trump can only hurt your chances with NAFTA. Our government won't be willing to help your country with good trade deals if you refuse to even talk about the wall. It's clear that Mexico is in panic mode. They cannot thrive without a good relationship with America. Yet for a long time, they've abused us. They've let millions of their own people flood our borders illegally, knowing those same people would send cash back to Mexico. They've profited when American companies sell out U.S. workers to move factories to Mexico. Now all that is going to end. If Mexico wants to do good by America, they need to talk about the wall. It's going to go up, one way or another. I understand if Nieto doesn't want to write a check for $25 billion. But that money's coming from Mexico, one way or another. If he was a real leader, he'd meet with Trump to come up with a plan. But delaying a meeting? It only means bad things for Mexico. Their people and society will suffer. All because Nieto is a coward. H.C. Daily Caller ABC to give Joy Beher the boot from The View it's over. Joy Behar is facing being fired from The View as ABC has continued to receive tons of backlash for the anti-Christian rant she launched into earlier this month. Fox News reported that ABC has received over 30,000 more complaints since the Media Research Center launched a campaign to hold Behar responsible for spewing anti-Christian bigotry. Behar and her co-host Sonny Hostin mocked Vice President Mike Pence earlier in the month for his strong Christian views. After Pence said that he believes God talks to him, Huston said, I don't know that I want my vice president, um, speaking in tongues and having Jesus speak to him. Beher then took this even further, saying that hearing from Jesus is actually called mental illness. Pence fired back by blasting ABC for allowing this kind of anti-Christian bigotry on their network. To have ABC maintain a broadcast forum that compared Christianity to mental illness is just wrong. Pence said, It is simply wrong for ABC to have a television program that expresses that kind of religious intolerance. MRC was infuriated as well, saying that Beher and Hostin took the liberal media's pronounced bias against Christianity to the next level. As of Wednesday morning, ABC has received 30,588 calls demanding Beher and Hostin be held accountable. In addition, 
NRC President Brent Bozell published an open letter to ABC News calling for an apology. Angry viewers have also complained to the View's advertisers, including Clorox, Gerber, Oreo, and Home Advisor. These advertisers have gotten over 6,000 calls of complaints. Instead of slowing down, Better has only stepped up her offensive rhetoric. This week, she went after conservatives who participated in PAC, saying they have a penchant for Nazis. Can you imagine what would happen if a television host mocked a Muslim for saying Allah speaks to them? All hell would immediately break loose. However, since Better went after Christians, she has not been punished by ABC in any way. Share this story if you think ABC should fire Joy Beher. House just passes major bill about presidential pensions, Obama is livid. Why on the planet would a previous president of the United States require a pension, or some other money-related advantages, so far as that is concerned? They should simply give maybe a couple speeches for every year and they will profit than just the wealthiest of Americans. In the event that they can't make it on speaking and consulting fees or lucrative book deals, that is quite recently too awful. We have an example being set by President Trump. He has declined to accept his presidential pay. Almost certainly that practice will extend after he leaves office, appearing as his declining the presidential benefits. While this won't settle the deficit, it points toward the first thought that those in elected office ought to be national leaders, instead of those searching for a lifetime salary from their government service. Surprisingly Mr. Trump won't need to settle on that decision to decay the presidential pension. The House just voted to cut the extent of pensions for mogul past presidents. Finally, in the event that Mr. Obama is troubled, he can get the chance to work, albeit any work he may do is a far cry from what most by far of Americans do once a day. The House easily passed legislation on Monday to reduce the pensions and federal benefits provided to former presidents. Before approving the bill by voice vote, lawmakers expressed agreement that modern-day former presidents don't need financial assistance from the government if they already earn salaries in the millions. It's intriguing to note where this routine with regards to paying past presidents' pensions got its begin. Under a law established in 1958, former presidents are eligible for an annual six-figure pension, plus funds for staff salaries, office space and other expenses. What's more, here is the place it is probably going to get cut. Rep. Jody Heiss, Republican Georgia, the author of the bill, questioned the necessity of providing funds for former presidents who can make millions of dollars from book deals and speaking engagements. Because of these opportunities, it's no longer necessary to provide taxpayer-funded support to former presidents in the same way as envisioned in 1958, Heiss said during House floor debate. Mr. Obama vetoed a comparative bill, guaranteeing worries over the fate of presidential staff members and the security of past presidents. Whatever. This time around it will be President Trump who will have the chance to sign the legislation. Also, there ought to be no uncertainty regarding what this president will do. What do you think about this? Do not hesitate and write your thoughts in the comments section below. Thank you for reading. H.T. The Hill How much of Trump's agenda is already complete hint more than Reagan's? As critics of President Donald Trump explain it, he's accomplished absolutely nothing since entering office while causing a whole bunch of unnecessary problems. Back on Earth, the story is quite different. Trump is plowing through the items on his agenda in impressive fashion. As the mainstream media and Democratic leaders obsess over wild conspiracy theories and the never-ending stream of gossip that emanates from the nation's capital, Trump and company are busy working and actually getting things done. Washington Examiner has the details on exactly how much has been accomplished by Trump thus far. With unprecedented speed, the Trump administration has already implemented nearly two-thirds of the 334 agenda items called for by the Heritage Foundation a pace faster than former President Reagan who embraced the conservative think tank's legendary mandate for leadership blueprint. 
Thomas Binion, Director of Congressional and Executive Branch Relations at Heritage, said that Trump has implemented 64 percent of the unique policy recommendations from the group. We're not talking about a few meaningless bullet points that cater to the very few either. Trump has managed to effect meaningful change that has improved the fortunes of our nation as a whole. At this stage of his presidency, Reagan had completed 49 percent of the heritage policy recommendations. We're blown away, Benyon said in an interview. Trump, he said, is very active, very conservative, and very effective. What's more, he said, Trump hasn't just focused on one agenda area, but he and his team have pushed through administrative moves on foreign policy, deregulation, immigration, tax reform and health care, moves often ignored by the media. In the run-up to the 2016 presidential election, Trump jokingly remarked that folks were going to get sick and tired of winning under his leadership. A little over a year into his first term in office, it's quite refreshing to note that's at least an option. As the commander-in-chief himself may say, he's managed to deliver on his promises in a big-league fashion.